MPs came rushing back today. Some ready with their sound bites. The Prime Minister is chaos. Others, Tories, with less to say. Well, apart from this one, wrapped up warm with one hope for the new year. An end to it. An end to it. That Conservative backbench plea for no more Covid restrictions. Are you gambling with the NHS, Prime Minister? That Boris Johnson has been balancing with what is happening on the front line. I'm sorry to report that hospital admissions are rising rapidly, doubling around every nine days, with already more than 15,000 Covid patients in hospital in England alone. So to the disappointment of some backbenchers, he's sticking with Plan B, but to their relief... So this government does not believe we need to shut down our country again. The debate has been different in Scotland, where some ask if restrictions have gone too far. Today, it's government relaxed one key rule, reducing the isolation period from 10 to 7 days for the fully vaccinated, bringing it broadly in line with the rest of the UK. This does not, in my view, mean giving up on trying to control Covid but it does mean seeking ways of doing so that are more proportionate, more sustainable and less restrictive. Then there was this. From today in Northern Ireland, tomorrow in Scotland and Wales and Tuesday in England, if you test positive on a lateral flow but have no symptoms, you no longer need a PCR. Your seven-day isolation will begin the day you test positive. However, you still need a PCR result to qualify for the £500 test and trace support payment. The aim is not just to cut isolation time, but to stop people with COVID travelling to get a PCR and to take pressure off the testing system. Actually, the time's been right for this for a long time. We've been doing you know, hundreds of thousands of really expensive PCR tests every day, and they haven't really had an impact on the pandemic since last summer. We've had lateral flows now for the best part of six, seven months. Everyone's comfortable with using them. He said genome sequencing tracking variants would be protected because of PCRs in hospitals. The question is, will any of this be enough to help ease pressure in hospitals with more than 20 English NHS trusts declaring critical incidents? Here in Bolton, like in many other places, non-urgent surgery is being paused. I've not experienced anything like this in the years that I've been a consultant uh, in the NHS. So this is a fairly extraordinary situation. He is a Londoner. It's not just hospitals. Care homes are really struggling too. In the group that Featherton House in Banbury is part of, over 500 staff have tested positive out of 2,300. At another home in Watford, the director wonders if the government got it right. Do you think Plan B was enough? I personally don't think they're enough. Uh, I, I believe that we should have gone into Plan C or Plan D. Uh, whilst no one wants that, uh, it may have been uh, a circuit breaker just to calm the numbers down. If it's too late now, I don't know. Not going further was Boris Johnson's big gamble. We're yet to know whether it will pay off. Anushka Astana, News at 10.